Protein of the week. This week's protein is banuraminidase. But first, before we jump right in, let's have a bit of a background. And new influenza viruses are constantly changing and evolving. About every decade, a new strain emerges and threatens the health of the public. One of the most famous pandemic outbreaks was the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918 which was estimated to have killed 50 to 100 million people. The outbreak of 2009 was also H1N1 subtype. The 2009 H1N1 pandemic was more commonly referred to as the swine flu. It killed almost 20,000 people, including friends and family, which changed the lives of many. There are two proteins on the surface of the virus, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. These two proteins can mutate and undergo small changes particularly during replication, that can evolve into new strains due to antigenetic drift. This increases the variety of strains so that the influenza virus can continue to infect people, despite immunity to pre-existing strains. These two proteins are known by scientists as HA and NA, respectively. There are 16 subtypes of HA and 9 subtypes of NA. Scientists use these subtypes to designate which combination of proteins make up a specific influenza A virus. In the case of the swine flu, the virus contained hemagglutinin subtype 1 and neuraminidase subtype 1. These two molecules control the virus's ability to infect the cell. The hemagglutinin binds to polysaccharide chains on the cell's surface. This bond allows the viral cell to enter and cause infection. If someone has gotten their flu vaccination or simply has natural immunity to a specific strain, antibodies against that strain attach to the hemagglutinin protein on the virus and inhibit the protein from forming bonds with the sugars on the target cell's surface. This prevents the virus from being able to enter the cell, replicate, and create a cascade of viral proteins to infect other cells. But enough with that. Let's focus on the case of a certain college student who decided not to get her yearly flu vaccination. Well, February came around and she got hit hard with fevers, aches, pains, the whole nine yards of the flu. She didn't have any antibodies to block the infection of the viral protein, and it got into her cells. After the virus has replicated, it exits the host cell. However, because there is still hemagglutinin and neuraminidase proteins on the virus's surface, the virus is still bound to the cell due to the hemagglutinin and sialic acid bond. Neuraminidase enables the virus to be released from the host cell. Finally, neuraminidase has its big break. Neuraminidase is composed of four identical, roughly spherical subunits arranged in a square connected to the virus through a long protein stalk. Each subunit that forms the head of the mushroom is made up of a six-bladed propeller-like structure formed by four anti-parallel strands of a beta structure. A beta propeller is categorized by beta sheets arranged in a manner around a central axis, as shown here. The enzyme's active site is in the hole in the middle, formed by the loops connecting the successive four-sheet motifs. The active site consists of a number of conserved amino acids including critically positively charged arginines, negatively charged aspartates. This helps the enzyme bind to the terminal sialic acid residues from the glycan structures on the surface of the infected cell. The negatively charged carboxylate group of the sialic acid binds to the positively charged amino acids in the active site of the neuraminidase. The neuraminidase enzyme cleaves the sialic acid groups from the glycoproteins via the glycosidic bond releasing the virus cells, as shown in the mechanism here. This allows for the virus to spread from the host cell to uninfecting surrounding cells, beginning the vicious cycle all over again. Without the neuraminidase, the virus would never be able to propagate and continue to infect and replicate other host cells. What's that you say? If the flu virus cannot propagate without a functional neuraminidase, then why don't we make an inhibitor against it? Eureka! In fact, the beginning of research for a neuraminidase inhibitor began in the 1990s. 
whereas vaccinations prevent the hemagglutinin from binding and injecting into the host cell. Today, there are also antiviral drugs that inhibit the activity of the neuraminidase and help prevent the propagation of the virus, such as relenza and Tamiflu. These inhibitors are synthetic molecular structures that mimic the presumed high energy of the transition state of the neuraminidase sialic acid re reaction. These inhibitors mimic the reactive sialic acid group, and so they recognize the proteins on the surface of the virus. And then it binds to the enzyme, and the active site closes in on these inhibitors, and basically they've taken out the main player in the propagation of the virus. However, these inhibitors are not necessarily magic pills that will instantly cure you from the flu, but they will reduce the length and the severity of the illness. Thank you.